A&M 41, Florida 38. I got to be honest with you, and you can check the tape for reference. This, to me, was not that hard to see coming. Sometimes we swing and miss mightily on our predictions. This one, our model nailed, we nailed, and I didn't even think it was that hard to see coming. Remember, I think, and I told you last week, what looked like a discernible matchup advantage for Florida, I never thought was one. People had taken the blimp view. Remember the late kick blimp, 50,000 foot? And they don't fly quite that high, but you understand what I mean. People had looked and they said, all right, well, Florida's got a good passing game. And on the other hand, A&M just got smoked by Alabama. So their secondary suspect, good passing game versus suspect secondary. Florida should roll, right? Well, those two things were true. But here's what else was true. We told you Kellen Mond did not play a bad game against Alabama. There was a blowout final score. We did not think that was indicative of the kind of performance that he put on and the kind of performance he was capable of. And the second part was we thought that Alabama met certain freeze point criteria, and that's just a reference that is common around here. Uh, basically, it meant there were certain factors on Alabama's team that were going to be insurmountable for a&M to overcome. We did not think Florida met that threshold. We also thought Kellen Mond was going to have possibly a career day. I mean, we used that kind of language last week. Well, Kellen Mond had a career day. We'll get to his numbers in a second. This, I don't think we probably, we did not put enough emphasis on how big a hinge game this was. I just told you I didn't think it was a must win for Jimbo Fisher. In the context of the season, it was. But in the context of his career, I mean, there were some folks out there talking about hot seat if he loses. Jimbo Fisher not on a hot seat. Jim, the only hot seat Jimbo Fisher sits on are the heated seats in that Lexus he pulls up to work in every day in. That's the only hot seat Jimbo Fisher's on. There's nothing about his job that would have been in jeopardy either way. But as it relates to the 2020 season, they lose this game, they're dead in the water. All of their preseason aspirations, contending in the SEC West, possibly contending for a playoff spot, all that's out of the window. You don't think they're capable of that. They do think they're capable of that. And until they're out of it, they will think they're capable of that. And so in that fourth quarter, everything's hinging. And all of a sudden, they win that game, and you go from being a two-loss team who's largely out of it to, wait a second, because now here's what you do. In the aftermath, immediate aftermath, you watch Jimbo yelling all over the place, drinking out of a bottle with no label on it on the field, and then you say, oh, man, A&M just won. Okay, let me see who they play next. Hmm, Mississippi State? Okay, Arkansas, South Carolina, Tennessee, Ole Miss, LSU, Auburn. Where, where, where's, where's the big – oh, they don't have a large remaining hurdle, do they? Now, in collection, this is a schedule easily they could lose two to three games against. But there's also a chance that A&M could be favored in every one of these games. And so they got past that hurdle, and now you see what I mean when I say hinge game. Kellen Mond had a career day yesterday. Uh, hat tip, Kellen Mond. We didn't think he played bad against Bama. We thought he was poised for this. 25 of 35 for 338, three touchdowns. Uh, more importantly, he didn't make a ton of critical errors that cost him the game. A&M owned third down, owned third down. 12 of 15, I think Mullen said 13 of 15. Either way, it's bad. A&M had 32 first downs in this football game yesterday. Big concern, we talked about it ad nauseum. I'm glad we didn't have a third or fourth show last week because we would have beaten it even more to death. We talked about the previous week for Florida and how many plays that defense was on the field for against South Carolina. And they beat South Carolina. No one looks at these critical factors. Just like Bama beat Ole Miss last night. So no one cares they were on the field for like 90 plays. Well, you will Saturday night when they play Georgia. But Florida's defense was gassed at the end of that South Carolina game. And we knew there was going to be a point eventually in this game against Texas A&M where last week's 83 plays showed up. And it happened in the second half. Here were the numbers. A&M, 303 to 192 total yards advantage. A&M, 40 to 23 total plays advantage. A&M doubled them up in time of possession. A&M owned the second half. And that was ripe for happening based on what happened the week before. Isaiah Spiller was huge in this game for A&M. 27 carries, 174 yards, two touchdowns. What did they find, though? As we come out of this thing, it doesn't mean anything if they win and then they get upset next week against Mississippi State. And they are less than a touchdown favorite in that game, by the way. So any, if you haven't already been convinced, anything, friends, anything can happen in this conference any given week. What did they find? And we'll, we'll just need the benefit of time to know that. When we look back and we reference, what did they find? 
I mean, what if that was the spark that finally lit things for A&M and they go further than they have at any point under Jimbo? They lost another receiver in this game. Feels like they're down like half a dozen receivers. That roster's good enough to win every game remaining on their schedule, even with that being the case. But what did they find? As for Florida, if you listen to Dan Mullen in the postgame, a lot of people are focusing on how many he thinks should be in attendance at Florida home games. I don't care about all that. What I care about as it relates to this team is what he said about his defense. And I don't have the exact quote here. Well, I do. I'm not going to look it up and bore you with reading all of it. But they had um, – I mean, imagine his frustration. They, Florida has eight possessions. That's all. They only had eight offensive possessions yesterday. They scored on six of them. That's a pretty good percentage to hit on. And they still lost. Dan Mullen – thinks that he should win 100 games out of 100 when they score on six out of eight offensive possessions. And yet, because of third down and his defense not being able to get off the field, whew, that's about as bad as you're going to see it under Florida. I mean, we got LSU at Florida this week. I don't know what the total is there. I'm not one to tell you to blindly bet overs, but if it's only double digits, I probably lean, lean close to that. Uh, it's just Dan Mullen put everything on the table after this game. He suggested every possible move could be on the table after this game. So a lot of you in Gainesville are very upset with Todd Grantham. I perfectly understand that. I don't think you're alone. I think your head coach, when he's talking about basic philosophy, personnel, packages, just the in-game functionality of his defense, he's not talking about players necessarily. He's talking about some procedural things. So we'll see how the week progresses down there. But big win for a and Florida's got to get right back. I mean, we're going to have Florida A&M, and that's a rare situation where both of those teams are in wounded animal mode, which always makes for fascinating theater.